You know, we uh, are in a time, there's a lot of chaos. Wouldn't you agree with that? And so there's a lot of people in the world that have a lot of fear, but not so with God's people. Brethren, these things ought not so to be for the people of God, for we're going to trust God. And, but you may be wondering, well, I know that God has a plan for the overall plan and how to advance his kingdom. And I know he's going to do that, but how is it going to affect me personally in the midst of all this trouble and all this chaos? And so you do what you always do. You go and go to the kingdom principles that God has given us in his word. And, and if you do certain things that God has said, which we're going to go over, he will exalt you. And if God has decided to exalt you, who can stop that? The answer, nobody. So we just do what God wants us to do. Yes, we have to, uh, we don't put our head in the sands and say all these things happening are not happening. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus that which we know lines up with the word of God, what we want to see, and that's what we speak. We don't speak what we're afraid of. Because if you don't speak it, it has no power. It will die stillborn. So we speak what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and then we walk in the principles of God that allow us for God Almighty to exalt us, for us to be great in the kingdom of heaven and in the sight of God to make it on earth as it is in heaven. God thinks you're great, and he wants you to, that greatness to manifest. Let's go ahead and put the title up there. Jesus is the greatest. You know, Muhammad Ali used to go around saying, I am the greatest. I am the greatest. Man has always tried to say, I am the greatest. Look at me. But no, Jesus is the greatest. And he taught us how to be great and how to do things and make a difference in this world to fulfill our kingdom destiny. Jesus is the greatest. Why? Because he is the greatest servant. No one has served man more than Jesus. He gave his all, and that's what makes him the greatest, and that's what will make you great. And for God to exalt you, the more we serve one another in love. So we go, we do our declarations, we do our decrees, but we're about our Father's business, loving people, bringing the kingdom of God and its goodness to them, and serving people. And when God sees that, he says, I've got to exalt him because I have given my word that that's what I would do. And he'll think you're great. And if God thinks you're great, what can man do to you? Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what's going on all around there. So let's look in Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. We just humble ourselves before God and man, you know, and we consider others more highly than ourselves. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's look at uh, Mark chapter 9, 33 through 34. They came to Capernaum when he was in the house. He asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. They said, well, I think I'm greater than Muhammad Ali. No, they, but they said, I'm greater. Than, I'll be the greatest. And sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. So if you want to be the greatest, you be the greatest servant and you'll be following in the footsteps of Jesus. And what happened to Jesus, what the father did to him, he'll do for you. Because Jesus lives inside of you. Hallelujah. 
Okay, one more scripture, and then we'll start talking for a while. Hallelujah. You want to be a great preacher? Just read the Word of God. Okay, Luke chapter 22, 24 through 27. This, I don't know if this is a different time, but it was, uh, it's a different response. So it may be each one was partial, or this was probably a different time. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them. And those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am, Jesus said, among you as one who serves. And he's the greatest. And do you know it's going to be like that in heaven? When we get to heaven, we're going to serve each other. I'm going to serve you. You're going to serve me. We're going to serve Jesus. And he's still going to be serving us. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He'll actually serve us when we sit down for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Isn't that awesome? Look, look at the kind of God that we serve. Hallelujah. Because I'll tell you this, you'll either be a servant to God or a servant to sin. There is no in between. But Jesus showed us the way. He is our example. And he did it as a man and not as God. He did it just in obedience to his father. I only do what my father tells me to do. I only say what my father tells me to say. And therefore, because he lives in us and has already done it and accomplished it, we can accomplish these same things on earth because Jesus accomplished these things on earth through his manhood. He was son of God, son of man. Because he didn't accomplish them as God, but through obeying and serving his heavenly father. And we can do the same thing. We advance the kingdom of God and bring forth miracles the exact same way that Jesus did. We have everything that he had. We got the word, the authority that goes with it, dominion over the devil, over the world system and everything of the world. And we got the Holy Ghost. We got the power of God. We got the name of Jesus. Now, what are we going to do with that? We got the anointing. Is that something you just put in the closet and then you have visitors over? Hey, let me show you. Look, I got the anointing in there. No, we we wear it. We go out where the people are, the hurting people, and we bring the kingdom of heaven to them and we make it on earth as it is in heaven. We do it the same way Jesus did, by believing, obeying, and serving our heavenly Father. And when you do that, certain things are going to happen. And we'll get the same treatment that Jesus got if we'll do the same thing that he did. Because he did it as a man in obedience to his father. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Because he was, all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. But he thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And because he did that, wherefore God the Father also hath highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father hallelujah okay let's go to the next slide okay We're in the same position. It's not robbery for you and I as we're born again 
to be joint heirs with Jesus and walk in his power and his authority. We have that. It's ours, just like it was Jesus. It was not robbery, as the, that's not how we would talk today, but it wasn't anything for him to say, yeah, I'm gone. It's not anything to say, I'm a joint heir with Jesus, and I got the power of the Holy Ghost, and all of heaven backs up when I use the name of Jesus. We have that. Number two, but even though that's true, we, like Jesus, we humble ourselves as children. And then three, we become obedient to the point of death on a cross. A cross is a place where flesh is crucified. We crucify our flesh. We'll be walking like Jesus. What else we got? Okay, a cross is where flesh is crucified. Then God will exalt us because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. No respecter of persons. Jesus did it as a person, not as God. Hallelujah. And then when we use the name of Jesus, demons and the world have to obey because God has exalted us, praise him. Just like they have to obey when Jesus speaks. So if we'll be about our Father's business, serving one another, being a servant, then we don't have to worry about what's going on in the world because God will be exalting us and we speak, things have to change because the Word of God will not, hallelujah. So we renew our minds to the Word of God, and we think like Jesus thinks. And even though it's not robbery to see ourselves as the joint heirs with Jesus, we humble ourselves and become servants and crucify our flesh on the cross. Hallelujah. Now, this will happen automatically because God has put the principle into the earth. Just like if you sow a seed. Let's say it's money. It could be anything. The principle is in the earth. It's going to come back with increase. God doesn't have to do anything. He's already put the principle in the earth. If you become a servant and serve through love, then it will automatically happen. God will exalt you. Hallelujah. And then he exalts us so that when we use the name of Jesus, the demons, the world, the world system, and all the cooperating powers, they have to obey. So then we begin to exercise dominion over the world system, not because of our own righteousness, but because we have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus who lives inside of us. For he made him to be sin for us who knew not sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 1 Corinthians 5 21. Jesus said that if we don't bear our cross and follow him, we can't be our, uh, his disciples. What he meant was we got to crucify some of our flesh. Our flesh wants to do some things that doesn't line up with the word of God. And you can't do that in your own power. You have to do it because you have decided you're going to follow Jesus. We give our lives to Jesus. Instead of losing our lives, we find it. If we try to find our life, we'll lose it. But if we lose our life, we'll find it because Jesus is our example. You want to know what to do? Just read about what he did in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then do it. John 12, 23 through 26. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abideth alone, remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds, brings forth much fruit. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whosoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be, and my Father will honor the one who serves me. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. I want to get with that program. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Jesus is the greatest, 
because he's the greatest servant of all time. And we should be servants like him. And he showed us the way. Matthew 20, 27 and 28. Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Just hold it right there. This, this, this principle works no matter what you're doing. When I was in the business world, the corporate world, and uh, I always got a lot of fruit and good productivity from the people that worked for me. And that was kind of a key to my success. Why is that? Because I served them. They knew I loved them and I served them. And I treated them with respect and said, you know, gave them freedom to do. But I let them know, hey, you run across a hurdle, something that stands in your way. You don't hesitate. You come to me and I will help you get over that so you don't have to have all that you know, anxiety. And if I can't do it, I'll go to someone. We'll find it. Because you know why most people do, you know, end up getting fired or whatever. No one, I guess, very, very few, let's say, show up for a new job and say, you know, I'm going to do a terrible job here. I'm, I'm not going to do. No, what happens is they come to some point where there's a hurdle there that they can't get over. And so they, and then they just start doing the things they're good at. And then finally the boss says, well, you left this thing undone and they're in trouble. But that's why you got to serve. As a pastor, I'm supposed to serve you. Hallelujah. Don't ever hesitate to ask me for anything. That, that's, what I, that's what I do. That's why I'm here. I don't want to serve you by giving you the word of God because I want God to exalt you. I don't want to just be exalted by myself. I want you with me. Hallelujah. In fact, I don't think I can unless you're, you're going to do that. Hallelujah. Whoever would be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto or to be served, but to minister or to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That's the greatest serve, servant of all. When we are born again, we become children of God. And we receive an inheritance that is beyond, really, what we can dream. I, I have sought and studied and prayed and uh, got with God. And I think I have a pretty good revelation of the inheritance. But there's still so much more that I don't know. And it is fabulous. And it would be better to go straight to heaven. Really. Once you get born again, well, there's no more pain, no more sorrow. All your problems would be over. No bills to pay. No funky people to put up with, all that. No pain, no sorrow. We'd find everlasting love, peace, joy, abundance, everything good. And nothing that is bad. So why are we still here? Have you ever wondered why we remain? It's we're still here because I'm still here. You're still here because I have to give my life as a ransom for many. To bring some people with me. Hallelujah. God wants a big family. Hallelujah. It's not his will that any should perish. And he wants to see them saved, healed, delivered, set free with freedoms and liberty to live their life and pursue life, liberty, uh, and the pursuit of happiness. That's why I know he's going to deliver our country because there's people praying and declaring, decreeing, believing and trusting in him. Hallelujah. And our eyes are upon him and he can do it however. His way is always the best way. Hallelujah. So we have to live our lives as a ransom for many. And as you do that, God exalts you and you have that much more influence and that many more lives you could be a blessing to. And that many more rewards laid up for you in heaven that will last for all eternity. It is well worth it. And besides, you get the joy of the Lord as you do it. As you begin to trust God. Nothing looks too hard because you've seen him come through so many times. Hallelujah. I have a race set before me to run so I can bring people with me to heaven and represent the kingdom of God as an ambassador here where I have citizenship and you have citizenship. 
if I fulfill my kingdom destiny, and if you fulfill your kingdom destiny, your life will have a positive impact on many people. Hallelujah. We can be like Jesus and serve by love. Servants have great faith because faith worketh by love. Hallelujah. Well, can a man really follow Jesus? Isn't that too hard? Well, yes, a man can or a woman can, but to do it, your life has to be like that kernel of wheat that falls in the ground and dies. My own life is gone, but now I'm alive in you. Hallelujah. And I have eternal life. I have the Zoe life. It's all kind of a whole lot better than just the natural life. Hallelujah. You have then want what Jesus wants. Your desires have to be his desires. Once you accomplish that, then everything you do is fun and is blessing. And when you see other people blessed, you get blessed. It makes you happy. What Jesus wants and desires more than anything is to see people saved and move from darkness into his marvelous light. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. So as believers, we've been given the Spirit of God. Let me say this. Yeah, I said it once. I'm going to say it again. We got the Spirit of God. We've got the Word of God. We've got the name of Jesus. We have the authority of Jesus. We have dominion over the world system. What are you going to do with that? God's given you everything that you will need that pertains to life and godliness. All we have to do is serve people. And once you start a life of serving people, you'll never turn back because it will bring joy and blessing and rewards, not only in the sweet by and by, but mostly right here on this earth, God will exalt you, hallelujah, and give you that much more opportunity to serve more and more people. Jesus uh, showed us the way. If we love Jesus, we will give our lives as a ransom for many. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you know Jesus will serve us in heaven? Why? Because he's the greatest. He's not, no one's going to be greater than Jesus ever. That means he's still going to be serving us more than anything. Hallelujah. Luke 12, 36 and 37. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. Listen, listen, let me just stop it right, hold it right there. You know, you hear about wait on the Lord. You think, well, you know, I'm waiting until he moves. No, what does a waiter do at a restaurant? They watch you, and then when they see something you need, they'll go over and check, is there anything you need? You want some more water? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they, is everything all right? Do you need some more napkins? Is that steak? Is that how you wanted it? We wait on the Lord. We watch him. We see what he's doing. And what can I do? How can I serve? And then he'll say, serve the people. And then that's what we do. And ye yourselves liken to men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meat or to eat and will come forth and serve them. How you like, this is what's going to happen. You're going to sit down and Jesus is going to come and serve you. What a, what a mighty God we serve. It's overwhelming really to think that Jesus is going to serve us. But that's who he is. He's not going to change. And we serve him on earth and we serve him in heaven. See, it should be on earth like it is in heaven. We serve Jesus. We serve people. People serve us. Jesus serves us. He's serving us right now. He's constantly making intercession for us. I, I really, I want to be like Jesus. He's a mighty, loving, good, perfect, 
holy God that we serve. It's not that hard to serve someone like that. You know, the Bible says to uh, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And then you uh, say, okay, uh, wife, you submit to me as head of the household. Do you know if you would love them the way Christ loves us, the church, they would have no problem submitting. Do they have a problem submitting to Jesus? No. Look how he loves them. If you would love them the same way, they would give you the same kind of honor. Hallelujah. No extra charge for that. Let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. He's going to serve us. We sit down. He's, he's probably going to say, do you want some more bread? <laughs> yes, Jesus, thank you. Isn't that going to be awesome? Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. If they only knew how loving, how good, he is, and how he just wants to love them and bless them and hold them. They would not act the way that they do. So they've bought a lie that the devil has put even into some church, churches, that God's an old man with a long white beard and a big club in his hand just waiting for you to make a mistake. That's not my... And the, I, I tell you, some of the things that get preached about Jesus, I think, well... That's not Jesus I know. The Jesus I'm talking about, that's Jesus, the son of the living God, Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. He's not like those others. He's good always. In him is no darkness at all. And we can live like that on earth. Romans 6, 17 through 18. Oh, did I not get through with this? Okay, sorry. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. When we see him as he is, the more you know about his goodness, his character, the more you're going to act like him because you won't be afraid to trust him because you'll know he's always going to be for you never against you. And we can be like him while we're on the earth. Now, Romans 6, 17 through 18. But God be thanked that you were, past tense, servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Hallelujah. Jesus still serving us today, constantly making intercession for us. And I have more good news. We have the opportunity to ser serve Jesus forever. Amen. Hallelujah. In heaven, we are served and we serve, we give and receive. That's the way it's supposed to be on earth, just like it is in heaven. God wants it that way. And it is great to serve Jesus while we're on the earth. How much greater will it be to serve him for all eternity? Let's look at Revelation 22, 3 through 5. No longer will there be any curse. This is what it's going to be like. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. Isn't that great? They will see his face. And his name will be on their foreheads. You'll have a name that is unique just to you that God gave to you. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. We, can, we don't have to wait till then to serve Jesus. We can serve him now and acquire incorruptible crowns that will be laid up for us in heaven, plus we get exalted while we're here on the earth to have more influence over more people. You know, if you want to stand out to the Lord, you got to serve while you're on the earth because in heaven, everybody's going to love Jesus. In heaven, everybody's going to obey Jesus. 
In heaven, everyone's going to believe Jesus. In heaven, everyone's going to serve Jesus. But what if you did it while you're on the earth? And God's going to say, I've got to exalt them. I've given my word. He couldn't turn that down, even if he wanted to. He does want to, but he doesn't break his word. So let's do these things. Obey, believe, love, serve Jesus while we're on the earth where we can make a difference to advance the kingdom of God. People need what you have, what you have in you. People need it, and they don't know they can have it unless you tell them. It's not going to happen by osmosis. you got to speak and say, God loves you, and he has a great plan for your life, and he wants to give you an inheritance that is beyond what you can dream. If you want to be great in heaven, then serve Jesus while you're still on the earth. Then one day, you'll hear the greatest words that a man, woman, boy, or girl can ever hear. Matthew 25, 21. Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Praise the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the opportunities that you have given us in this life to serve you by serving others. Help us, Lord, to esteem others more highly than ourselves. Help us that we can trust you completely so that we can do that. Because unless we trust you, we can't do it. But we ask for your help. Help us renew our minds to think like you. So we'll talk like you and walk like you and live like you on the earth and become a great servant. And we thank you, Lord, that as we do, you're going to exalt us and give us opportunities to be an influence on more and more people by the power of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, that as there's all kind of chaos and trouble and uh, talks of fear and doom and gloom, we know that, Lord, we're trusting you to sort all that out, to do it how you want to do it. But we trust you, Lord, as we serve people and love people and minister to people that you will exalt us and we will prosper even in troubled times because great is thy faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that you have made us the righteousness of God and given us everything that we need to flourish, to prosper, and to be a blessing wherever that we go, even in troubled times. And we thank you for it. We declare and decree that this is how we shall live. We'll serve others more than we ever had in our life for your glory. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen and amen.